let's have a quick look at that through the eyes of our camera object okay um that's looking good the only problem is that we seem to be getting bashed around a bit by all the spheres in the animation. This is where the target effect will come into play. So I'm just going to go back to my viewport camera. By the way, you can change the views between your camera objects and your viewport camera just by clicking on this icon uh, to the right hand side of the camera in the objects manager. So I'm going to enter in a target effect now. Again, I'm going to make sure that my cloner is selected and go to MoGraph, Effectors, and then down to Target. Okay, so the Attribute Manager comes up for this object now. Um, it comes up with a strength. I'm going to leave that set to 100%. Um, it's also the Target Mode is set to Object Target, which is exactly what I need. And then underneath, it's asking us what we want the target object to be. We want the camera to be our target object, so I'm going to click and hold down on camera and then move my cursor down so it's over the target object window and then I'm going to release a click. Okay, the last thing I need to do in the target um, effect to attributes manager is select repel because we want the clones to move out of the way of the camera. So I'm just going to click repel and then the distance is set to 100 centimeters and then you've got distance strength which is 100 percent i'm going to leave the distance strength let's have a look and see what the animation looks like now i don't know if you can tell but ever so slightly um a sphere will just flick out of the way of the camera there's one there just moving now Obviously we want the spheres to move quite a way away from our camera so I'm going to increase the distance from 100 centimetres to maybe 400. So if I go back to the beginning now and press play you can see the difference straight away. They're just springing out of the way of the camera. Let's have a look and see what that looks like for our camera object. Okay, I'm happy with that. Um, just to show you one problem that I can see. There's a perfect example just here. Our spheres are intersecting with each other. They don't notice that each other are there, so they're just going in their own direction. They don't really care. Um, to change this, what I need to do is add a tag to our cloner called a rigid body tag. So I'm going to select the cloner. I'm going to go to tags down to simulation tags and then rigid body is the first one you can see it appears in the object manager and the attributes appear in the attributes manager so let's go to the collision tab the first thing I need to do is to um, change this inher inherit tag option because our tag is on the cloner we need to tell the tag also to affect the um, spheres so if you click on apply tag to children and then just select top level where it says individual elements okay now let's see I don't need to do anything in mass the next thing I need to show you is in the force tab now I will demonstrate this problem to you but I'll explain it quickly first the minute you put a, a dynamics tag on any object in the object manager it is automatically affected by gravity so if I were to press play now you can see all the spheres just fall straight out of our scene that's definitely not what I want for my animation so I need to basically force the spheres to stay in line with the animation to do this I need to increase the follow position which I'm just going to set to 10 um, and let's see how that looks now you can see that the spheres are staying exactly where they should be great so let's have a quick look through our camera object okay you can see that they are actually bouncing off of each other rather than intersecting which is great um, so what we need to do now is basically get some materials on get the background on and that's us done before we do that I am going to actually 
change my mind a little bit because I'm allowed. I'm just going to increase the distance to 500 just to make it a little bit more obvious. Let's have a look. Perfect. Okay, so I've just gone ahead and got um, a material from the content browser. Um, and I've also chosen background from there as well. The content browser is a really good resource and allows you to get some really nice finishes for any of your scenes really. So I'm going to go ahead and put the blue material for the spheres onto the cloner. Then the cloner will apply it to the spheres for us. Now you have probably seen that the background has been in the object manager all the way through but we've not actually seen it. That's because I've hidden um, the background in the viewport and also when we when we render it um, I've hidden it there as well. To bring these back into the scene all I need to do is hold down alt and click on one of these dots and they will go grey and you can see the viewport has changed slightly because now we can actually see the background. Okay so I won't show you how to actually render this animation I'll just tell you that from beginning to end this animation took around about two and a half minutes to complete. Um, so let's have a quick look at the results now. Okay, so there you have it. That's the target effector in my graph. Thank you for watching.